In this video, we're going to learn how to make a sheet metal part in Fusion 360. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to take a look at creating this sheet metal part in Fusion 360. Now, on the surface, it looks like a pretty simple part, but there are a few challenges that we're going to run into. Now, this is an actual part that is a fan bracket, and this fan bracket is fairly thin sheet metal. There are a few features that we aren't going to be able to replicate, things like this dimple that's created using a form. There are some threads in the sheet metal here. We're just going to omit those and create the rest of the bracket just based on its geometry. To get started with sheet metal in Fusion 360, the first thing that we need to do is create a new design. And we're going to set the units, in this case, to inch. And we want to realize that Fusion 360 requires us to have a component. Now, this can be done from any of the various menus, but we simply need to make sure that the component is of type sheet metal. If you do this from the sheet metal tools and select new component, it will default to the sheet metal type. We're going to be saving this internal to our assembly, and we're going to rename this fan bracket. We need to select a sheet metal rule, and we're going to allow it to activate. So we'll say OK. And then we need to create our own sheet metal rule. Sheet metal rules are used to define things like the thickness and the bend values for our sheet metal parts. So we want to go into Modify and Sheet Metal Rules. Inside of here, we're going to take the default steel, and we can either opt to edit this, or we can create a new rule. Depending on how often you use your specific sheet metal values, you might want to create new rules, but in this example, we're going to simply edit this value. This is going to be, uh, in this case, we're going to be using 0 .030, which is a 22 gauge steel. So I'm going to simply modify this thickness value to 0, 030. The K factor is going to stay at 0. 0.44, and this is the center line of the bend. If you think about bending sheet metal, the inside of the bend is going to get compressed, and the outside of the bend is going to stretch. The K factor helps us determine where that center line of the bend is, where material will not be compressed or stretched. There are other values that we can modify, things like the bend condition and corners, and these are all based on the thickness values by default. We're not going to be modifying any of these values, so we're going to select Save and Close. Note that if you create a new sheet metal rule, you will want to go into your component and switch the rule to whichever one you create. In our case, since we simply edited the selection, we don't have to modify that. The next step is for us to decide how we're going to model. And when I say how we're going to model, there are a few different ways in which we can model sheet metal parts. We can actually model them as solid bodies and use the convert to sheet metal. Now, this typically only works for solid bodies with a consistent wall thickness. So I'm not going to be going over that method. The other method will use the flange tool. And the flange tool can be used with a single sketch line, or we can use a closed profile. Depending on the geometry that you are replicating, one might be a better option over the other. And for us, I'm going to choose the single line method. I'm going to select the front plane, and I'm going to start sketching. First, I want to base this off of the origin, so I'm going to start with a horizontal line. I'm going to hit Escape. I'm going to convert that line to construction, and then I want to hold down Control, select my origin, and place the midpoint of my line there. The reason that I like to do this is because it helps me center my design about the origin, and it helps simplify things like mirroring features later. Let's go ahead and hit Escape to get off of the Constraint tool. Next, I'm going to use my dimensions, and I want to set the dimension for this line. The overall length on the inside of our part is going to be 2 and a quarter inches, or 2.25. Now that we've got some scale reference, let's go ahead and start sketching lines. I'm going to be sketching the small lip here. We're going to go into this point. We're going to create another line that comes up, down at an angle. I'm going to use this as a reference. And then we're going to go off to the right, green check mark, and hit Escape to get off our line tool. The first thing I'm going to do is select these two lines, and I'm going to make them equal. It's important to note that constraints can be found in the right click menu, and they'll be based off of your selection. So in this case, I want to make both of those equal. We could also do this from our Constraints menu. 
Next, we'll hit Escape and we'll begin dimensioning. Using the dimensioning tool, or D on the keyboard, we're first going to give a width to the flange. These flanges are 7 16 so we're going to type 7 divided by 16 and hit Enter. Next, the height of the tall side of this bracket. This is going to be 7 divided by 8, or 7 8 The short side is going to be 9 16 or 9 over 16. You can see now that we have a fully dimensioned sketch. Once again, for this method, we don't need a closed profile. We can finish the sketch, select flange, and select here. One thing to keep in mind with using the flange tool, we're going to be using a symmetric method, but the symmetric method distance is for half of the distance of the sheet metal part. When we do something like extrude and symmetric, we actually have the choice between the full length and the half length, but we don't have that here. So in our case, we're going to start with a bracket, and the overall width of this is 2 and 3 16. So we're going to do 2 space 3 divided by 16, close the bracket, and then we're going to divide it by 2, because again, this is only going to be half of the length. We're going to say OK, and now we have the main portion of our sheet metal body. Now, here's where the trickiness comes in for this part. If we take the edge of this flange and we use the flange tool and pull it down, it overlaps itself. Now, depending on your requirements, if it's overlapping on the outside by using the bend position adjacent, then we can create this. It is actually able to be formed. However, if it's using the inside method and it overlaps itself, it will produce a warning. You can't actually create it, but the solid body will be joined and you can't create a flat pattern. So it's important to remember that there are different ways in which we can create this geometry. If this has to be inside, then we need to get a little creative. Now, the other portion of this that is problematic is the fact that it's not going vertically where we need it to go. And this is one thing with the Fusion 360 is we don't have the available option to change the profile of the bend. We're sort of at the mercy of the, the direction that it's going. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to trim this after the fact. We can modify things like the height datum, and the bend position, of course. We can override bend rules if we want a larger or smaller bend radius, but again, we can't control the width of that other than using things like the symmetric offset to make it smaller or larger. So we're gonna be using full edge. We're gonna be doing a one inch, in this case flange, because we wanna make sure we go completely below that horizontal, and we'll say okay. Next, we're gonna select this face, create a sketch. So what we need to do is we need to create a sketch that will not only trim away the side, but also add to it over here. So using the line tool, we're gonna to simply select the intersection point. We're gonna draw a vertical edge. We're gonna go horizontal and then back up to this point. Then we're gonna use our vertical horizontal constraints to make sure everything is vertical and horizontal. Then coincident between this line and the origin. Now that we have something fully defined, because we sketched on this face, we have both the outside profile and the inside. So we'll start with an extrude. We want to extrude this up to the inside face, noting that we could use the thickness value 0 0.03, but using the option to object, we'll maintain the parametric link with geometry. This is gonna be a much more handy option because that way if you ever decide to use a thicker geometry, then it'll update automatically. Next, we need to bring that sketch back and we need to select that small sliver, that triangle on the corner, and we're gonna extrude this. And again, we're gonna use the option to object. This time we're gonna join them together and say, okay. We can now hide the sketch and let's do a check. We wanna use the create flat pattern option, selecting the large face as our stationary face and just make sure that everything can be flattened. Let's go ahead and finish the flat pattern. I'm gonna add some small fillets on the corners, so we'll select fillet. We're gonna be using these two small corners here. And while it might be helpful to fillet these edges at the same time, it's important that we keep in mind if we're going to be reusing this. So by reusing this, I mean, we're gonna be mirroring this to the other side. So with a 0.05 fillet, we'll say okay. We're gonna select the flange, we're gonna select the extrude and the fillet. So we wanna make sure that we grab all of these features holding down control. 
we'll go to Create, Mirror, and then we'll select our mirror plane. If you have your planes hidden inside the geometry, we can simply hold down the left mouse button and this will display the selection dialog. We'll say OK, and now you can see that we've got it on the other side. Let's go back to our flat pattern in the browser. Let's update the flat pattern, and then let's activate it. We want to make sure that both flanges are able to be flattened and refolded. Now that we have that, let's go ahead and place our fillets on the corners. So we'll select Modify Fillet, and we'll go around and select all the vertical edges for each of these corners. While Fusion does allow us to select through geometry, with small parts like this, it can be tricky to get the right edge, so you might need to rotate the model around, and we're going to add a 0.125 fillet. Next, we need to make some of the holes. So in this case, let's start with the holes on the top face. As a reminder, let's go ahead and let's just take a look at the part. Right now, we've got the tapered section going up. We've got a large half inch hole that allows the wires to go through for the fan. We've got a hole right in the center simply because the shaft of the fan generally sticks back through the plastic. And then we've got three mounting holes. So we're gonna start by making sure that the orientation is correct. We're gonna select the top face and we're gonna to begin to sketch on it. Again, we should be mindful of where these holes go. You can see that we've got the large section over here and the small section over here. And we wanna make sure that we remember that the large section, when we look back at our picture, is over here and the small section's over here. So as we're looking at it now in Fusion, the large hole is further away. This one is directly in the center, and then we've got the small bolt pattern. So using our circle tool, I'm just gonna place those here. This is a half inch hole, one right at the center because we made sure we use symmetry. That's a quarter inch hole. And then we're gonna put one hole down here for our bolt pattern. Next, let's make sure that we use some constraints to ensure that these are vertical with the origin. And then we can use some dimensions. So again, D on the keyboard is the shortcut for the dimension tool. This is going to be 0.5. This one is quarter inch, so 1 over 4 or 0.25. And the smaller hole here that we're going to be using, uh, this hole is going to depend on whether or not you're actually using something like a thread or an insert or a riv nut. It really just is going to depend on the design. In our case, we're going to make a passing hole that's going to be 0.125. We also need to make sure that we understand the distance between all of these holes. The small holes are 15 sixteenths off center. So 15 over 16. And this hole I don't actually have a dimension for since it's just a passing hole for the cables. I'm just gonna get it approximately right and I'm gonna add a dimension of 0.8. So that's gonna get me relatively close and now I need to pattern this hole. So we'll go to create circular pattern, and then we want to select the center point as the origin, and we are going to have three instances. Now that we have these, we're going to go ahead and create the extrudes. While there is a hole tool that we can use, all the holes in that feature are going to be the same size. So because we have three different size holes, I'm going to be using extrude. Simply select all the profiles you want to extrude, and once again, we're going to be using the two object for the extent type. So now we have all of our passing holes there. We need to add them to the flange. So from the top of the flange, we're going to create a sketch and we're going to add a center point circle at the center of the fillet radius. These are also going to be 0.125. So D on the keyboard, we're going to enter a value of 0.125. We can use constraints to make them equal, or we can select the 0.125 dimension and Fusion 360 will create a link. I'm gonna finish the sketch. Once again, we're gonna extrude, which is E on the keyboard. We'll select each of these. And once more, we're gonna ensure that we're using the extent type to object. The two object just means that if we go back and we change the thickness, everything's gonna update properly. And we have two more things that we need to do. One, we're going to mirror this last extrude. And again, because we work so hard to have symmetry, we're just gonna mirror it across the midline. Everything should be fine. And lastly, there is a small cutout on the side that allows the wires to pass through. So from this view, we're gonna select the face, 
create a new sketch, and I'm just simply going to create a circle that allows me to have some sort of offset there. We can add dimensions if we wish, 0.5625 should be about right. I can add a horizontal dimension of 0.7, and it really doesn't matter for this feature because we're really looking at just creating a small opening so the wires can pass through and it can be easily installed. Once again, we're gonna extrude, rotate this around, select to object and say, okay. Because this is a passage for wires, we do wanna add a fillet, which is F on the keyboard. And we wanna make sure that we get both of these edges. And we're just gonna add a 0.05 fillet. That way we don't have a pinch point. Now that we have everything created, let's go ahead, right click on our flat pattern, update, and then we can activate it. So while this part seemed relatively simple, it can be tricky whenever we have geometry that's at an angle, and you might need to take a couple extra steps in order to create those features. But once you do, the features and the part will be able to be flattened, and then you can send it off for manufacture. There are a lot of other little tips and tricks in sheet metal that we could talk about, but I think that this is a good stopping point for this design. Make sure that you do save your design, and if you have any questions, please leave the comments in the video. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.